A Tall and Small Collection, Chapter 4 Disagreements and Risk Brady returned a few hours after Soren, Dorian, and Ray brought the fabric and thread back to their camp. While he was gone, the boys had already started organizing the materials into what it would be good for and projects they wanted to start, and they managed to accomplish a lot, even with their limited resources. Ray and Dorian now had padded bedding three cloth pieces deep. Dorian demonstrated his cleverness by folding one piece of fabric into thirds, rather than spreading out three separate cloth pieces. This allowed their beds to be close but separate, which was a good thing. Ray was known to borrow covers in his sleep and not give them back, waking up the next morning with everyone's blankets, not knowing how they got there. They also managed to set up a tent-like overhang over their beds to help capture the heat and keep dust off of them. This idea was Soren's, since he had more experience constructing tents. Plus, it was something to help create a temporary escape, a sanctuary, for them. This time of moving from one place to another was terrifying, and taking a moment to forget about the struggle of survival was a welcome relief. So, when Brady returned empty-handed, Sorden couldn't bite back his frustrated groan. His utterance earned him a spiteful glance from Brady. What was that about? Brady asked shortly. Soren glanced toward his brothers who were currently holding a race to see who could fold blankets and pack the essentials into their bags the fastest. You've been gone for hours. And you didn't manage to find anything useful, muttered Soren under his breath, making sure his younger brothers couldn't hear him. Brady huffed and began heading for the beds. Wait a second, I've got something I want to talk to you about. Brady stopped, folded his arms across his chest, and turned to face Soren half-heartedly. What? Soren cleared his throat and gestured for them to take a few steps further away from the boys. Soren's mind was racing, but he knew he had to bring it up. His brothers needed proper borrower training, and soon. Once they stepped away around the corner, Soren began. I took the boys out to get string and cloth that I borrowed, he said. Brady's eyes widened. You what? He said sternly. I took them out. It's not a bad thing. I made sure the room was safe, and they saw outside the walls, explained Soren. How dare... You shouldn't have done that, scolded Brady. Soren rolled his eyes and shook his head. It needed to be done, just like what I'm about to suggest. It's why I wanted to bring it to your attention, said Soren. Brady clenched his jaw and stared at his stepson. Soren was used to this look, but decided to press forward anyway. It's done, so leave it. Just listen. I've been thinking it over, and I think it's past time we show Dorian and Ray how to start borrowing. Like a band-aid, Soren blurted out the main objective. Brady stiffened instantly. He had never liked borrowing, which showed by his lack of effort and his complete lack of competence. Out of the question, snapped Brady. They're far too young, and we don't know enough about this place. We'd know more if you would do something and contribute to the family, Soren forced his thoughts to remain in his head. Instead, he took a calming breath through gritted teeth and stared at Brady. Look, I know we don't agree on everything, hardly anything in fact, but they need this, stated Soren. If something were to happen to one or either of us, who would they turn to? They don't even know the basics. Brady growled, shoulders hunched, and posture tightening. Soren continued, even with Brady's closed posture. I feel like I already know some of the basics of this place. I know the passages and safe rooms for them to go out. There are two entire apartments which aren't being used by any humans. They can work on speed and strength, and climbing and maneuvers. We can tell them all day about what they need to know and understand, but there's no substitute for hands-on practice, and that's what they need, explained Soren. And what happens if the humans fill those apartments? Where would they practice then, demanded Brady. Then we'll stay in the walls and practice, or, better yet, take advantage of the havoc humans go through when relocating and borrow necessary building materials. These are fundamentals, Brady. They need to know these things. We can't just leave them defenseless with no skills, Soren urged his voice getting louder involuntarily. 
Don't you raise your voice at me, Soren. I'm older and more experienced. I've seen things. Brady's voice trailed off. Soren opened his mouth to argue back, but noticed a messy mop of light, sandy brown hair duck behind the corner. Soren pinched himself hard and held back. I don't doubt that, Soren said, now keeping his voice measured. But I've seen things too, and that's not what this is about. Dorian and Ray are what this is about. I'm looking out for my brothers, and we're doing them no favors by keeping them locked down in the walls. They'll have to learn one day, and now seems like the safest time. Brady, stiff as a board, glared at Soren for a moment. It sounds like you're telling me what you're going to do with my sons. Are you actually asking my permission? Asked Brady. At this, Soren decided he had enough of this conversation. Not really, said Soren quietly. I'm just telling you what I'm planning and what I'm going to do. Join us if you get the chance. You might learn something. Soren walked back around the corner toward their camp before Brady could respond. Their conversation hadn't gone as smoothly as Soren would have liked, but at least he was able to say his piece. When he returned, Dorian and Ray were huddled on their beds, legs crossed. They looked nervous. The sight made Soren's heart sink. <sighs> they heard me arguing with their dad. There's no doubt. They heard us. Great. Is everything okay? Asked Ray, his soft, sweet voice barely carrying past their tent project. Soren tugged his lips into a partial grin, though it was more for reassurance than how he was actually feeling. Everything is fine. Your dad and I had a difference of opinion. That's all. Soren remembered his mother had used this phrase when talking about her conversations with Brady countless times. We were talking about something important. What's that? Asked Dorian. Soren sighed before looking his brothers in the eye. Your borrowing training. It starts today. The young boys' eyes widened, each for a different reason. Dorian, excited, leapt out of the bed and cheered. No way! We're going to get out and borrow stuff? That's wicked awesome! Ray, on the other hand, seemed to shrink into himself a little more. He was excited, but also hesitant. Ray didn't say anything, but Soren could tell the experience of seeing the outside world a few hours earlier was more scary than exciting than he let on initially. Since I have to go out again for food supplies, you can start with some simple exercises like push-ups and leg bends. We'll go over some of the basics tonight when I get back and start first thing in the morning. Sound good? Ah, whined Dorian. Can't we come with you? We can stay in the walls while you go out. Thorin chuckled. Not today, Bobbin. I have a long list of things I need to get. Anyway, you two have a task. See how many push-ups and leg bends you can do until I get back, okay? Soren smiled confidently at his brothers once they nodded an acknowledgement before standing and heading for his supply bag once more. Soren? Called Ray, stopping his oldest brother in his tracks. Be careful. Soren nodded and gave a quick, two-fingered salute before slinging his bag onto his back, securing his hook and darting into the darkness of the halls. Soren hated leaving his brothers, especially after they witnessed a disagreement, but it couldn't be helped. Soren was confident they had supplies for the next two days, but for a family of four, it wasn't reassuring. They needed more, and he was determined to make it happen. Soren knew he had already caused too much ruckus in the older human's apartment, meaning there was only one other place he knew he could go. Unfortunately, he suspected they were home. It was the first home he went to when they arrived. The two humans, a man and a woman, had sporadic schedules at best. The only upside was that they were often arguing or shouting at one another. Soren hated to think about what would happen if they turned their anger toward their unsuspected house guests in the walls, but he was grateful too. If they were concerned with one another, they were distracted and less likely to find him. Soren jogged through the lines to secure the line he left by the electrical outlet near the bread box. Instantly, he knew they were home. They were shouting again. Soren felt his heart racing, nerves tingling with unease. The human sounded louder than usual. He shook his thoughts from his head and tugged on the line, making sure it was secure. Then he started to climb. 
He used his legs to secure the line and his hands to steady himself as he inched his way up the thread. All the while, he could hear more arguing and several loud thuds, dangerously close thuds. Soren hoisted his leg over the rim of the board and laid against the board. The electrical cover was just in front of him. He could hear the humans much clearer now. "'What do you mean, it just happened?' the woman shouted. "'Like I said, it was an accident,' replied the man angrily. "'You don't just fall on top of someone and have everything after be an accident.' Soren didn't understand humans as much as he would have liked, but he didn't need to understand humans to suspect what had happened. The woman continued, "'And you went out last night.' "'I didn't think I was under house arrest,' retorted the man." No, you're not. But I know you didn't just go to the shop down the street. You went out with them again, didn't you? Meaning you lied to me again. Don't start with me. You know what'll happen, and you choose to do the same thing over and over. Soren remained huddled next to the wall cover and listened for the next ten minutes. It sounded like they were close to the kitchen. If Soren was right, the man would grab his keys and leave while the woman would huff off to another room. Sure enough, the man grabbed the keys and left the kitchen while the woman stormed off. Soren waited until he heard the grinding, whirring gears of the door machine and the roar of the car speeding away. Soren waited another minute before pressing his ear directly against the electrical cover. He concentrated his listening until he was satisfied with the amount of silence. With fleet fingers, he unscrewed his entrance and stepped out onto the counter. He checked the surface quickly before bolting out and ducking into the bread box. He couldn't stay long. He'd already spent enough time listening to the humans as they fought. The bobbins were probably worried sick. There was some bread in the back that had been crushed slightly by a new loaf. Perfect. There was little chance that they'd notice a crumpled piece of bread going missing. Soren opened the bag and compressed the wrinkled slice into his bag. It wasn't pretty, but an entire end half would last a few days. Soren resealed the bag as best he could before surveying the counter again. His heart was still pounding, but he kept his breathing even. Soren was about to dart toward the cover in the walls when he noticed something on the counter past the stove. His eyes widened. Fresh fruit. An entire bowl was just sitting on the counter. It was unguarded. How could humans leave so much food out? What a wonder it would be to not have to worry about something so basic for survival. Soren bit his lower lip. Did he press his luck once again? He already had a close encounter with the cat. He knew the human was still in the apartment. He was fully aware the other human could return any minute. Yet, Soren knew he could grab the first berry he could and make it back to the wall in no time. Before his mind could convince him otherwise, he charged out into the open. He threw the bag onto the counter near the entrance and leapt from the counter onto the stove and onto the other side. It wasn't a large jump, but it was wide enough to get his ankle caught if he wasn't paying attention. Soren wrapped his arms around the first piece of fruit he could carry safely, a bright red strawberry, before turning on his heel and darting back. He kept himself low, Every thump of his heart hurt his chest. Still, he managed to slip unseen into the walls with berry and bag in tow. And just in time, too. Just as his trembling fingers pulled the cover back behind him, the whirring of the mechanical gears in the car came rolling up. Not as close of a call as the cat, but still risky. Soren made note to never teach his brothers to take so many risks. Now safely behind the electrical cover, He sat against the wood to catch his breath, and he listened to the jingle of keys as the human entered the apartment. He dared not witness another argument. Using his hook, he lowered his bag and the berry to the ground before slipping over the edge and rappelling down safely to the ground. Soren rolled his shoulders once he was securely on the ground once again. His heart finally stopped pounding and was back to thumping lightly in his chest. He had been lucky twice in one day. Despite this, he scolded himself. Keep spending your luck like this and you won't have any if you really need it. You need to set a better example for your brothers, and that won't happen if you don't exercise the right precautions. Soren slung his bag and the berry onto his back. Be more careful from now on. 
Dad was always careful. I need to be too. The walk back always seemed shorter, and soon Soren was back at camp. The scolding he gave himself as he walked seemed less important when he watched the way his brother's eyes lit up at seeing him. The risk was worth seeing their bright eyes widen, sweetened naturally by the fresh fruit. They had their fill at dinner, ensuring the leftovers were secured off the ground and away from the walls as they curled up for bed. The fabric Soren retrieved was warm and soft, leaving all of them to a blissful sleep, necessary rest for the training ahead of them in the morning.